This Excel demonstration shows how to approximate the normal distribution using the binomial probability distribution. This is very similar to the coin tossing experiment that we did in class, except that it's more of a thought exercise and we don't have the problem of biasing the coin tosses or anything like that. I've created tabs in this worksheet and you can create these yourself and I recommend doing this for practice both in terms of understanding the normal distribution, understanding the binomial distribution, uh, understanding how to execute the binomial function in Excel and just practice creating charts. So this first tab I have the binomial with n equals 2. In each of these examples uh, you'll see that I've chosen probability p is equal to 0 0.5. In, the, in cell b3 I've put in the number of trials, in this case 2, and then I have just filled in both x and p of x in the table here. Uh, for x I start at 0 and then I run to the number of trials. For p of x, it's a little difficult to see in the video and I can't make it larger, I've used the binome.dist function. In Excel 2010 that's the equivalent of the binome dist function in Excel 2007. It takes four arguments. In this case, uh, the first one is x, which I've pointed to on the left, in this case, uh, a7. The second one is b3, which is n. The third input is b2, which is p. And then the fourth input is false because I want the uh, probability for that particular number of successes, not the cumulative distribution. So once I've copied that formula, down into each of the other cells, which you can see by inspection. Uh, then I simply create a chart, and uh, I edited the chart so that there's no gap between the bars, and I cleaned up the x-axis to be equal to, uh, to put a little label on it and so forth. Uh, but let me run through the different examples where we vary the number of trials from 2 up to 256. So this tab shows uh, where n equals 2, uh, the second tab shows where n equals 4, and notice what's happening to the bar chart or histogram at this point. Uh, when n equals 2 here, it's uh, very irregular. It's actually pretty hard to tell that it's a, uh, a bell-shaped curve at this point. When we make it n equals 4, we start to get a little shape on it. When we double the sample size to n equals 8, we're already making uh, pretty good progress. Still not a smooth curve, obviously. Uh, if we go to n equals 16, uh, still not smooth, but getting smoother, and so forth. This is n equals 32. This is n equals 64, and by this point, it's getting pretty smooth. We can make n equals 128. Uh, we can see a few of the jagged edges. And by the time we make n equal to 256, we've smoothed off uh, most of the jagged edges. Keep in mind that this is still technically a discrete probability distribution uh, with uh, only 257, sorry, 200, yeah, 257 possible uh, outcomes of the random variable. But you can see that it's starting to look closer and closer to normal. And with this last graph, I'm actually going to vary uh, p from 0.5. Let's see if we made p instead of 0.25. Let's make it 0.3. Let's look what happens to the graph. Notice how it shifts over, which is what we would expect because now the probability of success is only 0.3. So instead of an average of 128, uh, which is 256 times 0.5, it would have an average of 256 times 0.3, which is about 77 or thereabouts. I'm going to put that back to, and I can make that even 0.9. We can shift this thing around. Notice as we uh, get it to the extremes, well you can't really see it on this graph, it's not quite symmetrical when we do that. Technically speaking it wouldn't be symmetrical unless we had uh, p equal to 0.5, but I'll show you the impact on symmetry if we go back to one of the smaller sample sizes. So let's leave this tab and go back to say uh, n equals 32. If we now make the probability here 0.9. You can see very clearly that in smaller sample sizes when probability when p is not 0.5 uh, the, the distribution of the binomial is not symmetric either. And I just wanted to point out that as a uh, for, for two reasons. First the binomial distribution is not symmetric unless p 
P equals 0.5, which you can see from this example here. Let me switch back to 0.5. And the second is that the uh, normal approximation uh, will work for when P is any value as long as the sample size uh, gets very, very large. With smaller sample sizes, obviously, it's not going to work. So this demonstration showed you a little bit about how to use the binomial probability distribution in Excel and uh, some example charts here. Uh, mainly, I want you to review your understanding of the binomial distribution and how it approximates the normal distribution as the sample, as the number of trials gets uh, very, very large. Uh, I will also do a separate demonstration just showing the binomial distribution function uh, and how it works in the binomial file uh, provided by the publisher.